it's almost okay. Good morning. morning. Fantastic. Um, I need you to go on a journey with me. Thank you. I need you to go on a journey with me. I need you to close your eyes. I need you to visualize and see yourself in an airplane. I need to, you to imagine that you're at the window seat. And uh, we're lifting up and we're moving higher and higher. And as we're moving up higher and higher, you're looking down upon the city and you're looking for landmarks. And you see Moses Mabida, you see the train tracks, the train station, you see some buildings. I want you to feel and sense the busyness below you. And I want you to look out on one of those streets and one of those roads. I want you to see a car. I want you to imagine that car the size of your fingernail. And a car is the size of the fingernail. I want you to think of the driver that's in that car. That small driver. What's that? The size of a half a grain of rice. And I want you to imagine the mind, the brain, in that half grain of rice human being that person. I want you to open your eyes now, and I want you to keep this thought in your mind as you think about that, <laughs> that half grain of rice man with a brain probably the, sa- the size of a grain of sand. And I want you to think of all the troubles and all the concerns, all the dreams and hopes, all the conspiracy theories, all the stuff that that little grain of sand mind holds. And I want you to think of that between your fingertips and roll it down into the palm of your hand. You see, from your perspective, that grain of sand mind man, those troubles and those concerns held, which is real, but it is so small in the palm of your hand. In perspective, that troubles, those things, that life, that stuff, in perspective to God, who's now so much bigger than that imagination, that scenario that you see, reached out to all creation after making that creation. You see, God spoke... And we corrupted his word. We corrupted what he spoke. God had to discover, learn, and adjust to that. And on Mount Sinai, he wrote. (laughs) And we corrupted that. Then he came down to earth. The word spoken, the word written, took on flesh in Jesus Christ and walked among us and we killed him but he came to tell us a message that he will leave us a helper one that had been there from the start and had been through all of this in the Holy Spirit and so we are living now in the Holy Spirit dispensation in the time and in the teachings and in the fullness of what God has prepared for us one of these grain of sand mind men experience this to such an extent it is said that when he walked in the streets the spirit of god was so strong in him his understanding so complete and his readiness to be available was so perfect that his shadow touched and healed those who were sick. They lined the streets with their failing people, disease-ridden people, ridden people. And as he walked, his shadow touched them and they were healed. This very man wrote something for us. He wrote it down then, and we can read it this morning together. It's in Second Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from the Amplified Version because it 
amplifies the version. Verse 2. May grace, what is grace? God's favor. And peace, what is peace? That which is per the perfect well-being, all necessary good, all, spirit all spiritual prosperity and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflict, that is the word peace. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. How did we get it? How did we get that? His divine power. Nothing we did. His divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to what? To life and godliness. Through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his glory and excellence. By means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises, so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, which is the rottenness and the corruption that is in this world. Why does it exist? Because of covetousness, that is the lust and the greed. And become sharers and partakers of his divine nature. For this very reason, adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue. What is virtue? Excellence, resolution, Christian energy. And in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. And in exercising knowledge, develop self-control. And in exercising self-control, develop steadfastness, patience, and endurance. And in exercising steadfastness, develop godliness known as piety. And in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection. And in exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian love. For as these qualities are yours and increasingly abounding in you, they will keep you from being idle or unfruitful and to the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. For whoever lacks these qualities is blind, spiritually short-sighted, seeing only what is near to him, and has become oblivious to the fact that he has cleansed from his old sins. Because of this, brethren, be all the more solicitous in eager and eager to make sure, to ratify, to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fall. Thus, there will be richly and abundantly provided for you entry into eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I intend 
always to remind you about these things. Although indeed you know them and are firm in the truth that you now hold, I think it right as long as I am in this tent body to stir you up by way of remembrance. I think it right as long as I am in this tent to stir it up in your remembrance. Since I know that the laying aside of this body of mine will come speedily as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. Moreover, I will diligently endeavor to see to it that even after my departure, you may be able at all times to call these things to mind. Can you imagine that <laughs> grain of sand man, mind man, grain of rice man writing this and promising that he's going to do everything in his ability so that we could have that and how God has honored it because of his obedience. Remember, we corrupted his word that he spoke to us. We've corrupted the word that is written to us. We killed the one who came down who was the flesh of that. But now he's given us a helper in the Holy Spirit, which he has released into all of existence for us. And we tap into that, and we have it because we are in Christ. And so as we participate in the Lord's Supper this morning, can you call to that? Can you remember to read this verse these verses again, 2 Peter chapter 1, and write it and learn it and memorize it and commit yourself to reading it in a way that it can unleash to you the potential that the Lord has given to you. And so as you come down back to your seats here, descending and in this troubled state that we're in, we can continue in glory because of the power of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, in us, through us, and with us. Will you pray with me? Mighty Father, we thank you for your goodness. We enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter your courts with praise. And so we lift you up, Father, reminding ourselves how great you are and the power of your almighty existence. Your word, your written word, your spoken word, coming into its fullness in Jesus Christ, walking among us. And as he committed himself to death, to die for that which he knew from above, was raised from the dead. And as he was raised from the dead because of his obedience, because of his godliness, because of his perfection and righteousness, he's paid the debt of our sins. And so, Father, we commit ourselves to understanding this more and more in this day, releasing ourselves of the troubles of this world and taking hold of the promises which lie before us, promises that we've experienced before, fully committed. And so we leave our faith on the cross and move our faith from the tomb in the dark and move our faith into the light and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and into the helper that we have that we have accepted into the baptism of Jesus Christ. We're now clothed in him. We have all fullness, all spiritual blessings, all that is needed to make this world a better place and to tell all the world of what Jesus has done for us. And as we see the demise around us, we are strengthened all the more because of what Jesus has done for us. And we are freed from every bondage, from every captive, from every cell, from every chain that binds us We are released from that and lifted up into all eternity. We thank you, Father, for what Jesus has done, his body and his blood spilled as we participate in the communion this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.